Hey everybody, thanks for checking into another math video here. This one is about the triangle inequality theorem. Well, actually, this is the first of two videos. Um, the first one here is about the triangle inequality theorem. The second one is going to be about something that I don't really have a great name for. I'm calling it the opposite side, opposite angle principle. So please make sure that you watch that, uh, that video as well. Okay, well, the triangle inequality theorem says the following. It says that the sum of any two sides of a triangle is always greater than the length of the third side. In other words, if you have any triangle in the world, you take any two sides of that triangle and add up those lengths. That number that you get has to be a number greater than the length of the third side. Okay, And it actually brings up kind of an interesting question. All right, If I take a, a triangle... And I say the sides are 5, 7, and 8, and I include the idea that this triangle is not drawn to scale, which clearly it is. I mean, the 5 and the 7 kind of look like they're the same length. They're pretty darn close anyway. Um, is that triangle even possible? Is it possible to have a triangle with just any three numbers that you want to make on the sides of a triangle? Is that possible? Well, it turns out that it's not, and uh, we're going to set up these little inequalities to test it out. That's why it's called the Triangle Inequality Theorem, because we're always going to be using these greater than or less than symbols um, to test this uh, idea out. So it's really quite simple. All you have to do is pick any two sides, add them up, and see if it's greater than the third side. For example, 5 plus 7. Is that greater than 8? Well, yeah, it is. So that's good. What about 7 plus 8? Is that greater than 5? Yeah, 13 is greater than 5, so that's true. And what about 8 plus 5? Is that greater than 7? Well, yes, it's true for all three of those. Therefore, this triangle can exist. This triangle is possible. All right? And just to kind of show you a contrasting example here, what if I said a triangle had side lengths 6, 14, and 25? Is that possible? Could you make a triangle with those three numbers on it? And all you have to do is test these little inequalities out. All right? 14 plus 25, is that greater than 6? Yeah, it is. What about um, 25 and 6? 25 plus 6, that is greater than 14. Okay, so that's good. What about 6 plus 14? Is that greater than 25? Turns out, no. 6 and 14 is 20, and that is not greater than 25. Therefore, this cannot be a triangle. So this is an example of what you will see in your math books, uh, I'm afraid, you know, more often than we'd like to say, um, of kind of a bad drawing, all right? Or at least, at least a misleading drawing, all right? And these are misleading on purpose, generally, just to kind of um, test your familiarity with this triangle inequality theorem. OK, um, one other kind of question that you're going to see to test your familiarity with the triangle inequality theorem is something like this. If you see a triangle there and one side is labeled nine, the other side is labeled seven, and you don't know anything about the angle in between them, what is the range of possible lengths for that side labeled X? In other words, what is the minimum and what is the maximum possible length for the side X? That's another kind of question that you're going to see. Okay, so um, for ex I could show you some, some inequality statements and some algebra and kind of how you arrive at your answer, but I'm just going to show you how to get the answer here very simply. All you have to do to find the minimum is take those two side lengths and subtract them. All right, your x value is going to be an, uh, some number in between the minimum and the maximum. The minimum is going to be 9 minus 7, and the maximum is going to be 9 plus 7. So that gives you 2 on one side and 16 on the other, and there's your answer. That little statement right there called a compound inequality is the actual answer to the question, what are the possible lengths for x? All right, let me show you a little bit more about this uh, to so show you why this works out. I, I said we don't know anything about the angle in between the sides 9 and 7. Well, what if we made that angle really, really small? so that the sides 7 and x were practically laying on top of that side 9 there. You can see, I hope, that that x side has to be a number greater than 2. Otherwise, you wouldn't even have a triangle, okay? So, well, let me expand on that a little bit. If you had, if you could imagine those three sides there where x actually equaled 2, 7 plus 2 equals 9, so you wouldn't even have a triangle there. you just have a line segment, okay? or actually kind of like three line segments all on top of each other. 
So that's why it has to be a number greater than 2. And on the other hand, if we opened up that angle in between the 9 and the 7 and made it as almost as wide as possible, that would stretch out that third side, x, to be a number that would have to be actually less than 16. Remember this theorem says that the sum of any two sides of a triangle has to be greater than the length of the third side. All right? So, so that's, that's how that kind of works right there. So let's summarize the kinds of questions that you'll be asked to familiarize yourself with um, for this triangle inequality theorem. The first one is something like this. Can these three numbers actually even be the sides of a triangle? And what you want to do is start adding them up and comparing them to the, add, add up two sides and compare them to the third. If any two sides add up to a number less than the third side, then no, that triangle cannot exist. So let's say three, four, and five. Could you have a triangle with sides three, four, and five? And all you have to do is set up three little inequalities. And if they're all true, like they are here, three plus four is greater than five, four plus five is greater than three, and five plus three is greater than four. They're all true inequalities. So yes, the answer is yes, you could have a triangle with sides three, four, and five. What about 3, 5, and 9? Some people who didn't know about the triangle inequality theorem might think that, yeah, sure, you could have a sides 3, 5, and 9. But right away, when you say 3 plus 5 compared that to 9, is 3 plus 5 greater than 9? Is 8 greater than 9? No, it's not. So this cannot work. You cannot have a triangle with sides 3, 5, and 9. All right? And then the other kind of question is something like this. Given these two sides of a triangle, what is the range of possible lengths for the third side. And that phrase, range of possible lengths, always throws people off a little bit. So I'm glad you're watching this video to kind of like um, get familiar with what it actually means. Let's generalize here in a triangle. If you have two sides A and B, that third side X has to be some number in between A minus B and A plus B. That's as simple as that. That's how you find the range of possible lengths for the third side of that triangle. Let's do one final example here. Let's say one side's 7, one side's 13. You don't know anything about the angle in between, and you're asked to find what is the range of possible lengths for the third side. All right? It's pretty easy. All you got to do is add them up, subtract them, find the sum, and find the difference, and your answer is the number is, is in between those two. That is the range of possible lengths for the third side. Now, I'm writing it in this in compound inequality, as I called it. You are more than welcome to write it as two separate statements. In other words, something like x has to be more than 6 and x has to be less than 20. It's perfectly fine to say those as two separate statements. If you want to uh, shorten them into one compound statement, that's what it looks like right there, okay? Pay attention to which way the, the inequality symbols are pointing, all right? And, and you'll get this right. It just takes a little bit of practice, but this is the range of possible lengths for that third side. It's anything from 6 to 20. Okay? All right, that's enough, I think, about the triangle inequality principle. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I hope you're having a good day, and I hope I see you soon. Bye-bye.